Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Kicking It with the Locals. This show will introduce you to folks you've possibly seen in the stands, in the barking lot, in the parking lot, pre-parties, wherever. Today, we have Mr. Marklin Retzer, and uh, joining me today as a host also is Mr. Dylan Wilson. How's it going, good, guys? Good to be back. Going great. Stoked to be here. Cool, cool. Yeah, thanks uh, Thanks for being on the show, Marklin. Um, you know, uh it's uh, cool to have you here. I know you and I spent a little time uh, last week's game chatting it up a little bit. We had put a couple beers behind us and, you know, sitting there chatting and laughing. and uh, As enjoying. one does. Yeah, right. We have to do that at the games. You know, it's uh, the only way you can go go and, uh, and you know, check out the games and the people and, and everything else. Um, what's going on with you, man? How are you doing today? Doing great. Uh, stoked to be here. Looking forward to sports weekend with san diego state and loyal yeah. phoenix Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's a double whammy right i hope we come out like on top on both games man I, I know there's a lot of times where we have those types of games where we got either the padres or you know some other the wave or some other team playing and it's cool when we have like you know the a double or a trifecta or something when when everybody wins you know it's a lot of it gives us a lot of to to celebrate about so it should be it should be pretty exciting i'm, I'm stoked for san diego state yeah that that's exciting yeah, definitely. That final four, man. I can't believe that uh, that they're there. But um, so, hey, let's uh, let's get into this, man. Um, let's uh, talk about you. Let's, you know, again, this show's about uh, the supporters that are part of um, locals. I can see your local number one, two, and three. <laughs> yeah. Tell, talk, talk, tell us, talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, uh, you know, if you're from San Diego or how, how you made it to San Diego. Like, why don't we start there? Like, uh, where, where are you originally from? I'm originally from Northern California, uh, kind of the San Francisco Bay Area, Santa Cruz coastal, but uh, Sonoma County also, Napa Valley for a little bit. So definitely spent the first, you know, 20 years or so of my life pretty close to that area and in there most of the time and and i get the redwood trees it feels like home those coast redwoods that's really um you know the monterey bay area um they're living right uh i went to a boarding high school that was right on the beach there so you have a dorm room where this you're watching the sunset over the pacific ocean it sort of ruins you for the rest of your life you're like <laughs> where do i go from here <laughs> Yeah, just a little little spoiled, maybe, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then I moved down to Southern California in the early 90s and got to San Diego County uh, in 97. 97. So I've been here, been here a while. It feels I've been here longer than I've been anywhere else. And it, it definitely, San Diego feels like home. Yeah, definitely. After you've been been here for a while, it just kind of rubs off on you. And you, I mean, <clears throat> I've been here about the same amount of time, and it just like you know, you call it home, and it's it, it, home is home, man, and it's home is where the heart is. So that's that's cool. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I uh, I we we got three NorCal guys here because Sal, you said well, I don't know Watsonville counts as NorCal, but I too am from the yeah, the Bay Area, <laughs> so um, more East Bay, but very cool. I didn't didn't realize you were from yeah, up that way. Martin. What part of East Bay? So I was I from Oakland originally, um, but okay. I went to high school out in Walnut Creek. I don't know. I lived a summer in Walnut Creek. So. No shit, it's kind of boring, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, um, I was in a senior citizens community. Even I, I was living nice. with my wife's grandmother. I mean, it was girlfriend at the time. I had to do. I was doing summer school in Berkeley. Um, oh, nice! Which had some great ultimate frisbee pickup games at lunch. Oh, it yeah. was just like, oh yeah, every day have a break in between classes and like, all right. So Monterey Bay, man. So they they actually have a team now, right? They like there's mm -hmm. the second, the their second season. Yeah, yeah. The AFC and Union. Yeah, they they travel well. Their supporters are passionate. Um, I'd love to get to a game there. Wasn't able to make it last year, and we'll see how it lines up this year. Yeah, and Watsonville, I you know, spent time in high school and 
working that's, in that, Watsonville. My job, that, that's I, where like I, I'd ride a bus. Watson. <laughs> that's where I grew up until I was talking about this uh, uh, last week's episode. That's where I grew up until I was about 15, 16 years old. Moved down to, to Oceanside. But yeah, that's so weird. We're all, it's like a little happy. <laughs> <laughs> we probably ran into each other, man. <laughs> it, 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 there's a possibility. I know. I, 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 I almost feel like we probably know each other in that. In that. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. So um, in the, in the Bay Area, did you like play any soccer? Like what, like what yeah, how I, did you get, get into that? I'd play pickup soccer every chance I got. I, I was always playing soccer. Like there'd be a game and I'd try to get myself in it. And, you know, probably from the time I was, I don't know, 10 or 12, it, it feels like somewhere around there is when I started playing and then just, um, you know, I never did competitive or teams because my parents weren't going to put me in any of that. So it just like there's a game on a playground somewhere. I'm in it. I was playing goalie a lot. And like that started, I think, connecting me with Spanish language where it was like, I'm hearing it. I'm being around it. I'm like, hey, I want to know what's going on here. And that sort of launched me on a course to uh, for the rest of my life working on picking it up. And then in high school, I played in high school, but it wasn't a super, you know, the, the program wasn't anything. We, we didn't compete against other schools because of the nature of how that school was. Um, but I was, you know, always played all, all four years and was um, super into it. Got moved from goalie to forward at some point. They're like, you're too fast to be a goalie. Get <laughs> <laughs> you're going on the wings or up top <laughs> nice man nice so tell, uh, so talk to us about your journey to san diego you know there i think that's a kind of recurring theme with a lot of people and uh we talked about it the last show and like how everybody just ends up in san diego somehow some way like what, what's how did you how did you end up down here i thought i'd i was gonna end up in northern california that was my expectation um I, when I graduated from college, I would, uh, that was from in a, a small liberal arts college in the Napa Valley, so up north, and I had a job offer in Calistoga. Uh, girlfriend at the time was coming down to the Southern California area, area for physical therapy school, and I was like, I take this job. I'm going to see her maybe once a month, maybe not. I'm like, I'm going to give this one a shot, and it that was a good gamble, and it worked out, so I had a I uh, came down, did some grad school, um, and ended up getting a job out of that. We got married shortly after, and we were in the San Bernardino area for a couple of years while she was finishing school. Um, our Not first nice. kid was born. Uh, Gabe, who kicks it around with uh, the locals, he's <laughs> in. Uh, he shows up a lot. Um, and we decided, you know, San Bernardino is not the place we want to raise kids and started looking, um, looked real seriously at Monterey, had a job offer from there. And um, at the time, California had just put in class size reduction. So they they everybody was looking for elementary school teachers and, uh, you know, a bilingual elementary school teacher was a hot commodity at that point. It was like, You're like, I'm there. I got it. Yeah. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you want to work for us? You want to work for you? Would you like to? And, and just ended up landing in Carlsbad. Nice. San Diego seemed like a great spot. I'm a surfer. It was like, okay, we've got ocean. It's not too far to the mountains. We can get there. And um, it, it's been a really great place to be. Yeah. It's definitely home. Uh, Marklin, are uh, are Northern California and Southern California the only places you've ever lived, or have you ever like lived outside uh, of California? Or I lived in New Zealand for six months. Oh no, shit! Uh, That's all. Awesome. Yeah, I was backpacking <laughs> around the South Pacific. <laughs> uh, you know, ended up uh, ended up doing a lot of migrant labor, you know, fruit picking, uh, pruning plants, whatever I could get hired as washing dishes done the gamut there nice. um, to just kind of make it from place to place and that was that was great i i have a super uh fond spot in my heart for for new zealand it that definitely is a place i love covered both islands and 
just yeah the natural beauty in that place is amazing and the people are wonderful it's all awesome yeah so it's too New bad Zealand, we don't have any no kiwis at the club or in the supporters group you know no yeah. no like hopefully we can find some some yeah we'll see if we can dig some out uh, <laughs> um, that, is, that is so cool new zealand i've never been to new zealand I should probably make it out there sometime gorgeous if you get a chance it, it's well worth the trip um it to me, it compares to California in a lot of ways um, with some more extremes, some bigger extremes, like going how you're in almost two different worlds, going from San Diego all the way up to Humboldt County, yeah, where yeah. you get the that different and lines. New Zealand as well. Down at the south, you've got penguins and glaciers and moving on up, you've got, you know, Auckland feels a lot like San Francisco, a city on the water with all these bays and bridges and stuff going on. And then up full north, you've got subtropical rainforest and these long beaches. And that that just sounds beautiful, man. Like, I don't know. I have always gone down to Baja and like done my trips down there, have family down there. So um, I can imagine it's probably, probably the same kind of vibe, a little different though. But yeah, it's places like that just are so close to your heart man you know they just kind of stick stick to you forever <laughs> yeah yeah so new zealand for a while i uh spent several months in spain uh finishing up a spanish degree and oh nice um yeah my girlfriend was over there at the time and um she had been doing a whole year there and i came over in the spring to hang out and the professors were like Oh no, the American boyfriend's coming. And I got there and I spoke more Spanish than she did. And they they're like, yeah. <laughs> like we can communicate. Yeah, yeah. They love me. They're like, okay, this isn't gonna be a problem. So being in Spain, man, you had, I mean, like the whole soccer, or I'm sorry, football, football. Um, thing. Like, like what did you get to experience anything out there? Like what what like what happened out there? Yeah. Um I got turned into a Barcelona fan. I didn't have hey, a choice in the matter. Um, yeah, and my roommates were from Barcelona. And so they were like, yeah, you're going to be a Barcelona fan. So, <laughs> didn't um, even ask you, like, do you want to? No, it, it, it was, you, so. yeah, there, there's <laughs> that. It. And they took me to, uh, they took me to a second division game in nice. a suburb of Barcelona. And I, I don't remember the name of the, the town or the, the club. And I, I got to dig it up and see if I can figure it out. But that was insane. Like getting to see live Spanish soccer and where we were going, like one of the, one of the friends of, of my roommates at the school where we were was from the Canary islands and they were playing, the local team was playing the team from the Canaries. And so they like on the way to the stadium, they're, they're harping on both of us. They're like, do not talk. You, <laughs> you will not talk. My accent in Spanish sounds much closer to Canary Islands than, um, than the Spanish spoken in Barcelona. Um, I, I don't really do the fe and theta. Um, I can drop into it, but you know, you hear coque talk and that's, that's the, the Spanish and my accent's not that. They didn't want and, to tag you as an infiltrator, huh? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> and at one point in the game, I asked one of my buddies something, a question, and somebody turns around and they're, like, <laughs> oh, they're glaring at me and they're like, Where are you from? And like I'm like, waving his friends uh, over. You got I'm one over from here. the United States, but really I'm I'm supporting your team. I'm I'm here. Gonna, <laughs> at that point, it was all love. It was just like, all right, we got we're on the right football side here. <laughs> yeah, they show them the fake tattoo, right? You're like, I'm with these guys. I'm with these yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. They, they jumped me in already. <laughs> yeah. That is so cool, man. So was that like yeah, – that, that, that game was nuts. There, Like there was – behind the goal, it, it, the, the seats behind the goal were at field level. And there's like a chain link. You know, it's, it's like 10 meters or 20 meters or whatever, how far back behind the goal. But – there's chain link going from the ground all the way up to the top of the, the stadium area. And so the supporters are all back there. And when the away team was defending that end, they're lighting off flares behind the goalie there. It's just, it was noise and chaos. 
<laughs> Fortunately, the home team won. We got the victory. Oh, nice. We uh, the riots. came yeah. out okay. Uh, I didn't broken. have people harassing me for my accent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure the chain link fences weren't to catch the, the ball, right? <laughs> Uh, I mean, the the balls would blast off them, but it would definitely <laughs> keep the people. I don't know if it's in or out. Uh. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so did you did you spend a lot of time watching games out there, or was that was that? Um, not a lot. I I my recollections are more watching basketball. Basketball, okay. I think the Euros were on at the time, and um, and Barcelona was in the finals, so we watched several of those um matches and i don't know why we didn't um watch more it, it just didn't seem oh, like exactly. it, it was you know there were no tvs in the dorm where we were and so we had to get to somebody's house or get out somewhere where the game was going to be on nice. um i did play a lot of pickup soccer there um cool cool dirt dirt field and everybody you know you come out and there's like oh i've played on those games 20 on 20 in a small area <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh man, the ball doesn't go straight, right? You got it. It's like it's like a golf. It's a rock. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> got to time the angle and everything. Hey, um, so like, so back here in the U.S., right? You moved over here in '97. Like, talk to us about like when you got here, right? Uh, did you get involved with any soccer, you know, uh, happenings or any like? How, tell us that story. Like, how what, when you got to San Diego, like, what what do you what do you what do you do? San Diego, and I'm not even sure. I think it was a mutual friend. I ended up playing um, adult league soccer for a lot of years. I was in the huff and puff league. Um, <laughs> gotta love the huff and puff, the over forties and nice. over fifties and, you know, graduating on up beyond that. Um, that, uh, that was a lot of fun playing full field soccer, uh, played a few years of, the uh indoor ymca stuff and i just felt like every time i walked off the field there i was glad to not be being taken off in a stretcher or (laughs) handcuffs it was just like getting clipped from behind and taken down dirty and it's like referees come on i gotta work tomorrow i and and i'm either gonna bust this guy in the chops or like <laughs> hip check him across the boards and break him or i'm gonna yeah, get bro. damaged like uh so wow. i went back to the full out outdoor field and that was more fun like and good people good hangouts nice. um, as far as like getting to the the locals um you know, before that, there was the Soccer City Initiative, and I worked on supporting that, writing letters, and doing what we could do. Um, I'm also a musician, and I did a theme song at some point for Footy McFooty Face. There, <laughs> there's right. a Footy McFooty Face <laughs> anthem floating around somewhere that's just ridiculous. Hey, so um, let's let's talk about the um like your association with like the locals. Talk, talk to us about like the journey of getting there. Like when you got like your yeah, you hear about that happening. Like what what do you do? Like how do you get involved? What did you? Yeah, do? I think the first time I heard about it, uh, I I feel like it got announced at a women's World Cup game at Petco, um, okay. where there was a watch party, um, watch uh, watch party for a women's World Cup final and. They came out and they announced that, hey, we're, we're going to have a USL team. And they didn't have a team name. They didn't have a logo, but they had scarves and shirts. And Landon showed up and it's like, okay, this sounds like real deal. And then just started like, okay, when's that? You know, sign me up. Here's my email. I want to know. I want to be on this. Um, and, and getting going with that. And then once – loyal showed up it was like yes this is great and connecting with that then tapping in and going oh there's a supporters group i'm in um you know what's what's up with that and from getting signed up like starting like before even the first game uh there was a get together at a bar somewhere i think at chula vista where we were working on chants and um, like trying to 
get at least something. So when we showed up for the first game, we had a couple chance that we could pull out. Nice, uh, nice. Hey, so I'm a, I'm a parent too, you know. My and I a lot of the a lot of the things I do, um, as far as like the games go and soccer, you know, it, it involves him. Like he's coming back. He's a little older. He's you know he's gonna be 23 this year, but he's in Phoenix. He's coming in this weekend. We're gonna go watch the watch party. The, you said I think you said you have kids, right? You have, you yeah. Have, talk to us about like how like you involve your kids. Are your kids like oh no, we don't want to watch? Or yeah, <laughs> you know, like, how, how 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 do they take the whole like soccer thing? How do they get involved? They're soccer fans, and they grew up playing. Um, <laughs> just kind of casually, we started, you know, kicking it around. They they played rec soccer, which I coached. Um, nice. Did a couple years two or three years of coaching that and then they got into competitive soccer and played played some high school ball um enjoyed it love it um one of them had a a buddy in kindergarten whose family was from liverpool so they turned him into a liverpool supporter Uh, um uh. the other one uh it's kind of bops around with wherever Nice. As far as teams, but, um, they, I don't know what age about maybe 12 or 13. They, we started taking them to us games and, um, it was the early days of the American outlaws. And they're like, that is awesome. We want to be in that. So we, we'd go to the, we'd get tickets in the outlaws section and start learning all the chants. I mean, they, the joke is, they learned to swear from soccer chants and their mother. It, it, I, that's the story I stick with. Oh, and <laughs> they they go along with it. They're like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so you uh, you created a chant um, that was used uh, back in, in 2020 or something like that. Is it? Yeah, right? yeah. Tell, well, uh, that, that was like we talked about. I, I mentioned that getting together with chanting and drumming before the before the first game and um the club had put out uh their kind of statement of purpose who they are four pillars of we're who we're gonna be and you know it relates it relates to the crest it's like connects with the values um and they had four main ones independent authentic inclusive and optimistic. And I said, ah, that's, that's good. How can we take that and make something out of it? And so um, I wrote a song and like a kind of Anthony thing, IAIO, we are San Diego. And we, we took a chant, like just a very short section. IAIO, we are San Diego. Nice. IAIO, somos San Diego. Um, and that was one of the early chants that uh, we did for loyal games and that is like, so cool i did not i did not know that it's not see yeah. now i'm gonna have to learn the chant and not you know what i'll chant it myself i don't care <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the song's on spotify <laughs> or apple music or wherever you want uh a great place to enjoy music a great place to hear the song as well um and this is a good plug for john's forever loyal docuseries on youtube um i think it's like six or seven parts about the creation of the locals um it is the uh closeout closing credit song in that yeah. docuseries um so oh nice, nice. So i probably heard it because i watched that I, it yeah just, it rolls yeah. across the end um it's cool. like a two minute little mini song <laughs> yeah that was uh they had mentioned that i, I just had it honestly i hadn't really um i'd been watching the series and, and all that it just probably just does it by me but i'm gonna listen to it uh, next time I, I watch the next episode that is that is so cool um what was gonna ask you uh so um after you got uh, involved with uh, the supporters group, um, you go to games. Like, what? Like, what's your thing? Like, what? Like, let's talk about like your pre, like pregame. Do you pregame at the barking lot? Do you have a place that you? What? What are we calling that place, uh, Dylan? The. Um, oh, are you asking the local question? Yeah, the local question. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I think this <laughs> is. I think this is going to be a question we try and use as like a through line um, from episode to episode. I think was the idea. Uh, but just what's your local? Like, what's your go-to spot? It doesn't have to be pregame. Um, like, when you are looking to do Marklin and, like, have a good time and just relax, where do you like to go? Pizza Port. Pizza Port, huh? 
So I've never yeah. good where's, answer. Where's that? Where's that? Where is that at? I've never been there before. Uh, there anyone else is listening to? There's Pizza Port OB. There's uh, Pizza Port in Solana Beach, and my go-to would be Pizza Port Carlsbad. But there's um, a few around. Also, and you know, for me, it's just Brew Pub with great local beer, San, San Diego style um, pizza that's definitely California style. It doesn't fit into the like you get in those pizza arguments where people are like, "Oh no, it's got to be this." And they're like, it, "This is California, and it's like the sauce is funky, the crusts are funky, the like, toppings are like a there. totally nutty thing." But I don't think the locals have ever argued about pizza. Nah, never, like, never happened. What's your favorite kind of pizza? More, <laughs> more pizza. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is so cool. Um, so yeah, that that's a go-to. As far as game day, I mix it up. I, there's times I'll make it to the locals' hangout, uh, whether it's the barking lot or nice. over at Coronado Brewing. Um, nice, nice. That's always fun. I like to kind of savor the whole game day experience yeah it's kind of yeah, i like doing that too i you know um spend time dylan and i hang out the, uh, you know sometimes and coronado brew company is another one that uh we like to hit up there as, as well it's uh everyone's got their thing but that's cool man that's uh that's yeah. problem with the, we'll have to remember that and maybe hit, hit one of those places up one of these days I wanted to shout out as well Deft Brewing, uh, where Chavos go for their pregame. Um, Deft is awesome. I love their beer because they do kind of like more European style stuff. Um, and that's more up my alley. But there's also a meadery there and a wine place and a little pizza shack and kind of like a little beer garden courtyard. So shout out to Deft as well. Yeah, I've done a, a two or three or four pregames there as well. And um, Sometimes they end up with a live band, so you end up with oh, cool. live music and hangouts, and yeah, it's all, um, it's, it's great. It's kind of just what flavor you're in the mood for, um, all kinds of good hangs. Nice, nice. Hey, so speaking of music and bands, so you're a musician, right? Talk to us a little bit about that. I know you you, you talked about the song after the the first yeah. Talk to, like what's what, like is there somewhere we can go watch you play? Like like what? How does that how does that work? Yeah, um, I'm I've been a performing singer songwriter uh, for basically my whole life, and I uh, was in original band an original band for like almost ten years. Uh, right before I came down to San Diego and the first part of living down here, that was kind of the, the where the band started falling apart where everybody has kids and you're too busy with <laughs> taking care of babies and you're trying to get a gig and you're at the gig and falling asleep because you were up all night with the kids. <laughs> um, like, and it was like, why am I even doing this? Hey, cool. I got 40 bucks. <laughs> no, that's 40 bucks for the band to share. That's like, yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, I that back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that that was fun and kind of set me up. We we played around LA and Orange County a bunch and you know, doing the thing and starting to get a little bit of radio stuff, but nothing that really took off or got traction. Um down here I've been working on writing, writing and performing. I've had um a a, a handful of songs that have shown up in a few different surf movies. Um, I did kind of a mellow uh, acoustic guitar vibe stuff. Like what, what does it sound like after, after a surf session where everybody's just kind of kicking it and pulls the guitars out? It's that vibe. And um, on, on Safari again was, was the movie that first did it with Joel That's Tudor funny. and Wingnut. And that, that was like a great moment for me was, Wingnut reaches up and turns the knob on the radio and my song comes in. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. Cool. Really yeah. Sort of fun. you're like, I mean, um, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was a fun that moment. Cool, um, I've been writing and performing a, uh, pre COVID. I was performing quite <laughs> a bit two or two times a month or more. And afterwards I just haven't quite in, quite hit the groove of playing again. I'm in the middle of a recording project that uh, I'm not middle. I'm nearing the end. I'm finishing up final vocals this week. I've been working on, on my last vocal tracks and um, waiting on a keyboard part to come in, but uh, then it goes into mixing. So that should be out 
and available in the next couple months. Let's plug it in, um, man. Let's plug it in. Where can we, where, where do we keep Yeah. Behind? Um, Spotify. Well, my website, marklinmusic.com get signed up on the email list and that's, um, that's it right there. Yeah. Sign up on the email list. You can download stuff. You can find where my music is when I'm playing all of that. That's, that's the easy way to do it. This is so cool. I mean, you know, just like we were saying at the beginning of the show, you know, everyone kind of, we rub shoulders and we're, you know, chanting for our team and, and like, we got a superstar right here, right next to us. Mark Lynn Retzer, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> yeah. And like Spotify, Apple music, wherever you like to do it, you look up Mark Lynn Retzer and there's, um, I released the last single I released, uh, make everything better, uh, came out right at the end of December last year. Um, so, and released, uh, three, two or three singles the year before it, it just, there, there's always a trickle out of stuff. And then this one, um, th this is going to be a five song project that I, I have my trio playing on drummer and bass, and then I'm bringing in keyboards and I get to do all the fun stuff. Uh, yeah, so like rock and roll, yeah, <laughs> not no, just acoustic guitar. You know, as a parent, man, I like, I admire, I admire what you're doing, man. Cause I know how tough it could be trying to, like you'd say, you know, we're taking care of babies like all hours of the day and then going to play a gig. But I admire you that you you're still doing that, man. Cause it's, it, it can be tough and it's the love of the, of whatever it is you're doing in this case, music. And that's uh, good for you, man. Fist bump. The, yeah. <laughs> the, the love of the thing, you know, there was definitely, um, about 10 years in the middle where there was, I remember the moment I was up on stage somewhere playing a songwriter show and me and acoustic guitar and it's, you know, I'm getting home late and I'm sitting there thinking I'm going to get 20 bucks for this gig and I'm not at home reading books with my babies. Yeah. And I'm like, I love doing this music thing and my kids are going to be little once and then they're going to be gone. And so I sort of, I didn't stop playing music. I was like performing with a Tahitian dance band. I I do shows every now and then place coffee shops or something, or get called in to play a gig with somebody, but I, I definitely slowed it down. And then about the time high school kicked in, I'm like, wait, nobody's around. My kids are out doing their own thing. They don't even want to see me. I'm like, I'm going to start playing again. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. I think that that's kind of like my script too, man. I like, I, you know, same thing with my son. I had my own hobbies and own things to do. And, um, once he got into, into soccer though, man, that was kind of like, Ooh, cause I had, he, he grew up playing American football, you know, and it's, um, it was hard to transition into like watch the <laughs> soccer. Like he's like, what are we doing? You know? But yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. It's like, you have that extra time, but it's, it's even better when you have like your kids that love the same thing you do in this case, you know, soccer for both of us, you know, we have, everybody's got kids. And then once you get, get them to like the same thing you do, you're cool. You know, you can have conversations. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's really fun. I love hanging out with them. Um, you know, Gabriel shows up, at the games a lot. I get to hang with him. We'll, we'll pregame together. And that, that's really fun. Um, his brother, Adrian, uh, a little busier with work at this phase of his life. So like, don't quite get him to games as often, but he makes it out every once in a while. Like he, he was at the first one. And <laughs> then after that we had, he's like at post shutdown, he's a lot busier. His life's taken over. Hey, so let's, uh, so let's talk about, um, let's talk about like those experiences, right? Cause it's in the, you know, we're in a, a few seasons now into the, into the, into loyal and, um, we've all had our moments that were like, we look back and we're like, dude, that was so cool. That's a great memory or that went down there. And I remember that. Is there a moment like that, that you have looking back these last few seasons, you have a one particular moment you want to share with us? There, there's a, a lot of, I don't know if there's like one standout moment um, something that always is just so huge for me. And every time it happens, I always dig it. And from the very first time it, it gave me chills when the team comes back and, and does the San Diego, we are chant back to us. 
and with us that win or lose that is so awesome and um going on some road trips to some away games where the team will come over and do that with us on away games like that's awesome um and just those connections um like with players with the team with each other um last year i i made it out to albuquerque for the mexico game there were i think about eight of us it it was awesome trying to be as loud as time trying to be as loud as you can right like you yeah want want them to know that we're here (laughs) and then just catching grief from all of the fans and it was and we were laughing we ended up with a draw which felt like a win for them because we outplayed them and gave up a goal late Uh, but we had pre-gamed with them like we had connected before we even went out there um that's cool yeah you know one one thing that i sort of picked up uh at some point is buy a beer for an away fan and that you know look for somebody in an away jersey go hey can i buy you a beer and like they sometimes they kind of get a little skittish about that you're even wanting to talk to them yeah. And then they're like, wait, you want to buy me a beer? They're like, that's the universal it's language. Right? Now, I know exactly, right? <laughs> Just not Phoenix, though, right? Um, you know, I, I have bought a beer for a Phoenix fan. You got to you gotta be better than them. That's fair. You know, it's like, and who? You have a lot you, of people to You share them. a beer with somebody, and it all of a sudden stuff starts getting chill, and you start like relating to each other and, and we're gonna we're gonna yell at you during the game we're coming after you you know we're, we're going hard for 90 and then once the whistle blows hey if you beat us great give it to me if, if we beat you it's coming back at you whatever it's like on to the next one um but just built finding for me it's the soccer community the like global soccer community of how we can tap into that and connect with each other and find our commonality rather than things, you know, and even Phoenix. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. I would like win them over to the, away from the dark side. And and so many good fans, so many moments like that. I, I ran into somebody from LA galaxy. And then when we were up there for the um, open cup last year, he found me and he's like, I've been saving tequila shots for you. Come on, let's go. Nice. You know, it's like, so Love anytime they play or we play there, running into those people, making those connections um, starts with the beer. Yeah, that's so true though. You know, it always comes down to the fact that it is just a game, you know, at the end of the day. And uh, we're all going to connect somehow. Um, you know, there's going to be those outlying folks that just aren't, don't aren't in that wavelength right but hey we're not focused on them we're here to have a good time we're here to here to drink beer and here share in our in these moments so do our thing yeah 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 making the you know those connections is definitely the the you know what it's all about it's uh um finding those people and then because you know it's a it's a lifelong type of thing for some folks you know and uh like for us, you know, however long we've been supporters for, for, for loyal, that you're going to find the same thing with, you know, as much as Dylan doesn't want to say Phoenix, Phoenix, you know, and, and every other team that we play. <laughs> That's what the show's all about though, right? Is like, we want to help foster and facilitate that community of the locals. We want to help people get to know each other. Absolutely. Um, so that's yeah. what we're trying to do here with kicking it with the locals. Absolutely. Um, Dylan, do you have anything else? Is there anything else you want to ask Marklin? Um, No, we already <laughs> asked you about your local. Um, another shout out to Pizza Port. A great answer. Um, I guess the last thing, uh, you mentioned your website, marklinmusic.com, correct? Um, yes. Do you social media? Do you, Where's a good place for people to find you if they're curious? All Marklin Music on all the socials. Sweet. Marklin Music. Uh, Damn. Easy. Insta, Twitter, YouTube. Awesome. Oh, mine. That is so cool. Yeah. A consistent branding. <laughs> yeah, indeed. indeed right? <laughs> hey, uh, so Mark, is there any, anything else you want to talk about before we wrap up here? Something that's you want to get off your chest, something that we didn't talk about? Anything? You know, I, I'm just stoked for 
the loyal and I'm going to remain optimistic for the future. You know, hope I'm going to hang on to hope until we can't anymore and love (laughs) to see this keep riding this, you know, the, the locals, uh, the vision for what it started as and what it's grown into, um, both the team and the locals, I'm super impressed and really, really grateful that there have been enough people around with vision to, to be inclusive, to be absolutely crazy supporters and good humans that accept everybody and that really build on the community. And I feel part of me feels this is very representative of San Diego. Like this is who we are as San Diego. Um, you know, the IAIO chant, we are San Diego. And it's like, that matters who we are and how we show up. And it like, I'm so grateful that there's a a football soccer team um, that represents that. And they're playing amazing soccer. It's so fun to watch. Like it's a beautiful style. It's great. And the locals and the community around 109 and just around the whole stadium, um, it fires me up. I'm, I'm stoked. No, you said it, man. I, I couldn't agree more with you. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's the truth. And I, I looking forward to this one last question before we take off score prediction for this weekend against Phoenix. We're going to beat him three nil again. Yeah, let's go. Trey Saucero, that's going to be Trace our Alcero. champion. There you go. <laughs> All right. Marklin, thank you so much for being here with us, man. We're going to be seeing more of you uh, as we move along with uh, kicking it with locals. Dylan, you are the man. And uh, what's your cat's name again? Archie. Oh, yeah. yeah. Archie. Archie he's just, orange, so he's I mean, a loyal fan. All talk right. About kicking back. Look at that. That cat's just kicking back right there. Kicking <laughs> he's back. kicking it with the locals. locals. He's yeah. kicking yeah. it with the locals. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for us. We'll see you next time. Tune in. Uh, we should have this uh, episode up soon. Uh, keep an eye out on Bum TV and everything else. Uh, catch you at the next one.